Alrighty, gamers, thank you for joining me again. We are going to be going over Ultima Online on the UO Alive server and the importance of using their enhanced razor, or maybe not the importance, but how to use it properly. Even if you're not like a coder, they can make all of your own scripts. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into your game options because there's a lot you can fix in here that doesn't have anything to do with razor. So the, the stuff that you see me obviously clicked on here, you always want to run. You want auto open doors, smooth doors, auto open corpses, skip empty corpses. And then this cannot, I never use any of this stuff. I show HP in the percentage always. And I do the aura under my feet always. That way it just kind of lets me know where I'm at, where my teammates are at. My wife plays with me. It lets me know where she's at. Um, if we're in like a, you know, darker area of the dungeon or something like that. And so, moving on down, you definitely don't want to have to hold anything down to get rid of a, a gump. A gump is if I were to take, you know, several different health bars and put them all together, then I would have to like have to, you know, hold, hold all to, to move them. It's not really something that's efficient. So I move that and say closed all gumped when right click. Down here, you definitely want to close the health bars whenever the mobile is dead. You don't want them staying up and cluttering up your screen. And for grid loot, you want both. I do both because sometimes it, it kind of glitches out sometimes on, on just one. Both will give you a much easier option as well. It pulls up a bar much like this with loot in it. You're able to examine the loot you know, while it's sitting right there and then click on it to loot it into your bag, which is extremely convenient. This is completely up to you. I like uh, to enable circle of transparency. It allows me to see myself if I'm like on the side of a building or something. So um, like you can kind of see there a little bit. It kind of lets me know that I'm not running into a rock or a snake or I don't know, something. My luck, a demon or something. So I definitely do that. And down here, you've got... Should be something to... There we go. Okay, enable drag select to open health bars. You want that because having to click on each mob to pull them up, now you can just click like this. Everything in that square will pull up as a health bar, which is extremely convenient, especially when you're doing like a champ spawn or something where a lot of enemies are coming at you. The second, we'll go to sound. I turn off combat music. I absolutely love UO music. It's one of my favorite uh, musics of any game ever. But the combat music over and over and over again, especially as an archer, because I'm consistently in combat regardless. I uh, have grown to hate it, unfortunately. Um, it, or if you do want to leave it on and listen to it for a while and see if you can handle it. Um, I personally don't like the combat music. Video. I don't really mess with anything over here. I, I haven't really seen any need to. Um, I'm guessing... Well, it's hard to say if you, if, you have, if you don't have a computer that can handle UO. I mean, I think they can run these on those new um, Wi-Fi bridges. So pretty sure you're good there. Um, tool tips. Okay. Fonts, up to you. Obviously, if you want something weird, like I, that's just weird, you can do that. But uh, I try to kind of keep it normal. Speech. You can change colors, um, but you don't have to. You don't want hold tab for combat. That's terrible. So you turn that off that way whenever you hit tab once and then hit tab again, it'll query it on and off. Um, if you're going to be doing criminal stuff, you may want to query before you end up doing it on this server. It's not really that big of a deal. Single click UI buttons. That's really nice. I feel like whenever I have to double click, I'm always shifting the stuff around on the screen, which I, which I don't like. So the single um, click just, you know, it helps me not have to... Uh, Screw up my placements all over everything. Counters. It's good. Okay, so cell layout. This is what I have right here. If you want a 6x6, six six, which is what I use, and I probably don't actually need a 6x6, six six, to be honest. I could probably do a 6x3. Because that is just enormous, yeah. Actually, I'm going to do it the other way around. About 30, that's what I want. There we go. So now you've got more room up here already. Um, but that'll allow you to put like key things that you have. 
Uh, like for example, I can put my lock picks up here. That way I can just click on my lock pick without having to uh, go into my bag and do it. Apples are for my dog. Info bar, I love the info bar. It's the thing right here. You can customize it. You can add things to it, change colors up on it. Um, I added the extra gold. You could add another one though if you wanted and you could just, you could put anything that's on here. So let's just say damage chance, swing chance, notoriety. Um, that's really, really good whenever you're on a server where you can PK. Uh, that lets you know as soon as you turn back blue. But I'm going to go ahead and do tithing points because that is something that's important to me because I use that. Container size, up to you. Experimental bottle. So apply. And now you'll see that on my nice little bar up here, I've got 13,000 tithing points left. Now, a few things to go over on Razor itself is I made the mistake of having a couple characters before I realized this. Default should, default should be just a default Razor system. You want to add in your character right here, add the name to it. That way you will have your own setup guy for all the settings that you have at that. Uh, unfortunately, my guy's settings are default. But if you have other characters, then obviously you want to make sure that you can switch between them because you don't want your hotkey to be number three for greater heal on one character and the Calvast Flame on another character and then try to be healing yourself and then it's not going anywhere, you know, because you're on, you're on the wrong settings. So yeah, just make sure that's all set up. Over here, this is one of those things that you can set up. Uh, light levels, I just click this. It makes it to where you're never in the pitch dark, so that's really nice. You don't have to worry about that. You could actually turn off some of the more annoying sounds um, in the towns. Like if you're sitting somewhere trying to trying to do a macro for a smithing or something, and there's 16 cats around you, and they're just meowing the whole time, like mine is in the background of my house, you could just mute it. Unfortunately, I don't have that mute in real life for my cat, but... Options here, there are a lot of options. Um, one of the most, or that you're gonna use the most of is open new corpses within. You can adjust this to more than two tiles if you want. The only difference, the only bad thing is sometimes at that point, you'll have something open that you can't click on because you're too far away to loot. So I feel like two tiles is, is pretty pretty good. Um, you can also change the delay, like in an object delay. This was phenomenal for thieving because you were able to move something and before it got back, you could tell if you had like a secret pouch underneath or something on here, it's not gonna be quite as important. Filters. I haven't really messed with filters, so I'm not really sure that I'm going to because that's. So we're going to go over scripting real, real fast. This is going to be like a crash course because to be real honest with you, I'm not a scripter. But uh, when you go on here, this will be empty. So we're going to click on new. It's going to pull this up. We're going to hit record. Okay. And then let's say I want to do, I want to work on item identification. So we'll just click on that. Click on this bow, and as you can see, my item identification skill went up. Well, I want to do that a lot. So um, what we'll do here is we will change this weight to target to, let's say, 5,000. And then we will stop recording. We will save as item ID in the Python files. And we'll cut. Get on back to that. Now, once you do that, it's not going to show up yet until you hit add. So here we'll type in item, item ID, and there it is. So the one thing that I make the more mistakes on than anything is I'll click play here. I'll see it work, and then I'll walk off and make a sandwich or something. Not realizing that I forgot to click loop. So 30 minutes go by, and I'm like, man, this thing sucks. And it's because of me, because I suck. So make sure to click loop there. And then when you hit play, it will continue to uh, go on item identification for you. We set it up for 5,000 milliseconds. So it should be every five seconds that it does that. Oh my gosh, my cat is crazy. Um, so you'll be able to go up on that. That works pretty much for most of your trainable skills that you can do stationary. Um, you can't obviously sit in one spot and train lumberjacking because the tree would run out of wood. Same thing with mining. 
But for the most part, if you're trying to get hiding maxed up, detect hitting maxed up, um, a few of the other things that are simple, like the arms lore would be very easy to max up. Um, and that's just, I mean, if you don't need them, you don't need them. I guess I'm somewhat of a completionist on this kind of stuff. I just feel like if I, if it's there, I would like to get it up as much as possible. But uh, that's basically how you're going to work with with Python scripts. So whenever you're done, you just click stop. It'll show stop right here. That's it. Agents, you can put things here to uh, auto loot like gold, or um, let's say that they have arrows on them and you're, you're an archer, that you'll auto loot the gold and the arrows and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool to do that. Scavenger also will pick up anything on the ground that you want such as uh, the champ spawns when they drop all that gold, you could just walk by and you're able to pick up the gold, um, walk by, you're able to pick up the arrows people drop. That way you could have kind of like a, a regenerative, <laughs> regenerative quiver there. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll have to go in here, set the bag, scavenge list, add, and then put the, you know, what you're looking to scavenge. It'll put the actual serial code for that item into it. And then of course it'll pick that, it'll start picking that stuff up. Enable scavenger auto start online. I don't mess with toolbars. I don't mess with targeting. Skills. This is just basically going to be one of your skills here. The hotkeys are where it comes in. Um, hotkeys here are, are really nice. You're going to be able to. Okay, so if you click on a spell and chivalry heal. This, when I press number five, this will use both my heal and my cleanse by fire. So it will heal me if I'm not poisoned, but it will also cleanse by fire me if I am poisoned. Um, it will do the exact same thing whenever you put big heal or Majory. Majory will, it will try to heal you if you don't have poison. And of course, if you do, it will end Nox or whatever it's called um, to get rid of the poison. These all are able to be set certain key. So if you would like to set every single one of these to a key, that is, that'd be crazy. But um, I typically set the things that I'm going to be using in combat. The things I can get away with not using, I, I, I have clickies up here. And stuff. But I'm sure that I could be a lot more effective in all of it. Um, so like I've got momentum strike set to six. Most of the things that I've got set are actually going to be for my pet. Now, so pet commands, you know, follow me, guard me, kill, that kind of stuff. And three, I've got set to use bandage. I don't know if that's, I don't think I can use bandage shield trigger because mine is, I'm not healing myself, I'm healing a pet. But, um, I do have bandage use only for uh, you know healing my pet over and over. So that is a oh man, talk about a crash course um, in enhanced razor. But um, hopefully with that you'll be able to get in here, get started, and start looking at some of your scripting. Uh, like I said, on the Discord, um, reach out to me. Uh, it's either going to be Gymnastic Goldfish or Shadow of Death. I can send you the files that have all of the uh, actual scripts in them. And it'll be everything from Detecting Hidden, Chivalry, E-Loot. I don't know what some of this stuff actually does. It all came in a kind of a, I guess, package. But... Uh, the lumberjacking one is really cool. I can I can send that one to you. It allows you just to move the move the mouse around, and as long as you're near a tree, you'll 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 hit it. And it even converts it over to planks to kind of lower the uh, weight. And then as long as you turn it into shafts, because I'm guessing the only reason you'd really be using it out in the open would be to make arrows. You can do it for quite a while out in the wild um, to, to go ahead and get all those shafts and start making your own arrows and bolts. So I think that's going to be it on the Razor Enhanced. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, any comments, I would absolutely love to help you out um, as much as I can. Obviously, there's still a lot I don't know. 
But I know when I first started and, and this thing came up, I was like, I don't, I'm not a C plus plus writer. Like I, th I thought it was like some crazy witchcraft. Um, obviously it's not. It's just not something I was typically used to seeing. Once you get used to it, it's actually pretty simple to, it's pretty simple to at least do the basic stuff to make your life a lot easier. So um, that'll be it for this video. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. I would absolutely love to build an Ultima Online community because this is a game that I've always loved and I'm going to continue to love probably until the day I die. Hopefully they keep the servers going. <laughs> but uh, look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thanks.